Good afternoon and welcome to the October virtual tour of the Las Trompas campus. My name is Sandra Cockrell and I am the Director of Philanthropy here at Las Trompas, as well as your co-host this afternoon for our tour. Uh, we do have another very exciting tour this afternoon. Uh, I have a change in my co-host, as well as we have a really um, tremendous surprise guest. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, Angie, if you could give us our housekeeping tips for the tour. Our tour this afternoon will be 30 minutes. And of course, as always, we are recording this tour. Uh, you will receive an email this afternoon with the link. And please do feel free to share the tour with your friends or your family. You may also go out to the Las Trompas webpage at www.lostrompas.org. And you may also view this virtual tour there as well. Um, this afternoon, we're going to try to have about five minutes at the end of our tour for uh, questions and answers. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a tab that says Q&A. If you click on that tab and type in your question or your comments for us and hit submit, we'll be more than happy to answer those or answer as many as we can at the end of the tour this afternoon. Um, there will also be a very brief survey when the tour is over. And if you don't mind taking that survey, we would certainly appreciate that. So this afternoon, I have a new co-host. His name is Mike Collier, and Mike is the Las Trompas Board President. And I'm very excited to have him as my co-host this afternoon. And I'm gonna turn this tour over at this time to Mike and take it away. All right. Thanks, Sandra, and a big Las Trompas welcome to all of our loyal supporters, our neighbors and friends. Um, I couldn't be more excited and having the opportunity to host today's October webinar. And we're doing a little switcheroo. It, it wasn't that I forced Dan out and wanted to get the spotlight, <laughs> but we will be switching things up and I'm gonna be interviewing Dan later. And I think you're gonna find out some interesting things about Dan's background, more interesting things about this wonderful project and what Las Trompas is all about. Um, as some of your regular viewers know uh, and following the website, we are doing really well on our fundraising. Uh, we are, are getting close to the end of the project. There have been a few delays and the project's now set to be completed and open uh, on January the 15th. And we do still have a ways to go. And so I'm sort of gonna be out there today a couple of times asking to see if you can uh, support us one little bit more, maybe by buying one of our our pavers that are gonna be going in in the front and I'll show you the, the area that they're going in to soon. Um, but we have just under $300,000 left to raise. And um, it's, it's been a long haul, but with the generosity we've gotten from you and the other members of our community, it's, it's really been amazing. And I couldn't be more proud about the support that the community has given to Las Trompas. So one easy way here late in the game, uh, I mentioned the pavers. This uh, slide here shows the bus drop off canopy and the pavers are what you're seeing there on the ground plane underneath the canopy. And we have uh, two different sizes of pavers and you can customize the pavers in, in many different ways in terms of your uh, your text and your wording and who you might be remembering on the paver. Um, the first one I'm showing here is the big paver, the 16 by 16 inch uh, paver that has, it's 30, uh, 3, 30, no, it's not 30, only $3,000. Um, and you can customize five lines of text with 18 characters per line. And uh, just so there's no misunderstanding, a character does include a space but there's plenty of room to say things on these pavers and they're, they're beautiful. They really are, they're laser engraved and uh, they'll be there for years and years and years. The second size paver we have is a, an eight by eight 
and it can be customized with three lines of text and also 18 characters per line. So to make it easy on everyone, and again, I'll, I'll encourage you to maybe reach out to your neighbors and friends that might want to have some recognition out at the site. Um, on our web page, there is a, uh, a little icon down there that says paving the way to Las Trompas. And you can click read more and it will explain to you how you go about ordering the paver. So we are um, hoping to put a big push on and get the majority of the paver sales done. And the other thing we're hope contractors to make sure that the ones that have been purchased before that date are available for Insta. Like I said, it's a, it's a great way here late in the project to sort of uh, fill up the bucket a little bit more. Um, before I go to the interview with Dan, I wanted to remind you where, where we've been. I mean, I, I didn't count the number of webinars we've done, but we've certainly uh, shown a lot of progress pictures over the, the year or more. And uh, so we're gonna show you a few of those older pictures and, and remind you where we were. Uh, and then we're gonna show you some exciting pictures of, uh, of the new building and what's being finished out right now. Um, in this picture, you see the, the blue uh, membrane that went on the walls before we put up uh, metal siding and put up stucco to watertight the building. Um, you can see the raw plywood framing of the canopy at the bus drop. The other thing, and, and maybe not everyone knows this, but we have a, a parallel project going for the building C building, which is one that we saved when all the demolition was going on. Um, it's a, it was the biggest of the buildings on site and we, we had big issues there. We had a lot of uh, rain leakage from the, the old roof. So the board um, authorized money to be spent on building C. We're, in this picture, the, the old roof had been stripped off. We've already re-roofed it. We've got new HVAC units on the roof and uh, that one's coming along quite well too. So uh, exciting things that uh, sort of remembrances of where we were probably, this is probably about a six month old photo. Um, next slide, Angie. Now this is a fairly recent picture outside to show you that uh, uh, that blue membrane on the, the walls has have now been covered up. There's a corrugated metal siding on the upper floors and they're finishing uh, work on the stucco. Actually today they've got some great colors that they've put on on the ground floor. Um, just to remind you this new pick up and drop off turnaround will be able to accommodate three of our 15 passenger buses at a time. So, uh, and the 15 passengers are wheelchair accessible. So um, in a short while, we will show you more pro progress, but uh, we wanted to have an opportunity to see a different side of our regular host and our wonderful executive director, Dan Hogue. Um, and I'll throw in a reminder here, Dan on Halloween will have been with Las Trompas for 10 years. Uh, that's, that's amazing in this industry. And his level of commitment and the energy he puts into this facility and the program and making it great moving into the future is uh, unmatched. So we will get there in a little while. Um, actually, not that much of a while. <laughs> Dan, are you out there? Hi, Mike. I'm here. I'm actually here on site in the building. How are you? Good, good. You, you look good in the new facility. I feel good in the new facility. Let me tell you, I mean, the progress since uh, I think I hosted, uh, the last time I hosted one of these was two months ago. And thanks to Joe and Kate for uh, Joe, our director of the day program, and Kate, one of our uh, one of our supervisors in the day program for uh, participating in last month. But yeah, it's it's been a little while uh, for me to actually be in the facility, and the amount of work that has happened since then 
is amazing. Um, I'm, I'm standing right now in what will be the uh, movements classroom. Uh, and I have to say, you know, we've got lighting up here. We've got ceilings in. We've got paint on the walls. We've got, we've got doors. I mean, we've come a long ways. You bet. You bet. And before I forget, congratulations on your upcoming 10 years. It's, Thank uh, you. Thank it's, you. It's been a great, great run as long as I've been here sort of paralleling with you. Um, you're a great partner in this whole venture. And uh, I know that prior to coming to Las Trumpas, you spent many years working in the developmental disability service field. Can you tell us how you got into this particular field? Well, it's actually really interesting. I mean, I've always had an uh, interest in giving back, but, you know, unfortunately, I was, uh, at the time uh, that I got into the field, I was actually working as a, uh, as a liquor store clerk, and uh, after being held up with a sawed-off shotgun, asked one of my friends, are you guys hiring? And he said, yeah, we're actually hiring for an uh, independent living worker. And that was at Arc Fresno. I'm a Fresno uh, child. And um, I went and applied for the job and I didn't get it. But about a month later, I got a call saying, uh, we just want to let you know, you were actually our favorite interview. You just didn't have the experience that we offered the position to somebody else and they didn't work out. So do you want the job? And I jumped on it. I, I had that flashback of the sawed off shotgun and I jumped on it. And um, <laughs> from there, <laughs> From there, it was it was sort of um, uh, sort of like a shotgun wedding. I mean, as soon as I went in there that very first day, I was told, "Hey, you've got folks upstairs that need to learn how to cook. Uh, go teach them how to cook." And trial by fire, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It felt so rewarding from the very beginning, and I immediately created a passion for serving people with uh, developmental disabilities. And it wasn't very long after that, maybe three years that I actually started my own independent living company. Um, and within a year, we were actually the largest independent living company in the Fresno Madera area. And then shortly after that, I got my master's degree, about three, uh, not my master's, I got my bachelor's degree in uh, psychology and decided I wanna learn more about this field and joined a company called uh, Center Valley Training Center and became one of their program directors in the Merced area. So I just kept sort of progressing and progressing. And I worked on my master's degree in rehabilitation counseling, got that and said, it's time for a change. I'm ready for a little more responsibility. And luckily enough, the board of Las Trampas at the time said, we welcome you. And October 31st, 2011, I landed here. Awesome. Awesome. Doesn't seem like 10 years, does it? <laughs> um, some days it seems like 10 years, some days it seems like 20, and some days it seems like yesterday. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Since you've been involved with developmental disability services all these years, what, from your perspective, has been maybe the biggest challenge you've faced? You know, I have to say that the biggest challenge that I have faced hasn't been with uh, individual programs um, or anything. It's been more with the state structure and the state financing for our services. I think many of you out there know that we are funded through the state of California through an entitlement uh, act, uh, the Lanterman Act. And in my years, I think one of the very first years that I was uh, working in Arc Fresno, the state shut down and we were struggling to make ends meet. Um, and that's happened several times since then. But even since the very beginning, even though it's an entitlement program and the state of California says that we will cover the cost of services, it doesn't mean that they're covering the cost to the level of the actual need. And I would say it's been just a huge struggle seeing people in need and having to figure out how we're going to provide everything that a person needs with very, very limited funding. So that's always been a, a, a big uh, sore uh, thorn in my side. Um, and 
uh, you know, and it hasn't stopped, you know. Well, we'll talk a little bit later about some good news, but yeah, it's always been a struggle. And I think that the people that we serve really deserve a lot more than what they've been getting. So that being said, with the financial side being pretty well squeezed, um, what, what do you envision for the future at Las Trampas School and our programs and for people with disabilities in general? What's, what's gonna be out there? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, since we are talking about the funding and the future, um, you know, we've, we've dealt with a lot of uh, rate cuts from the state of California and then rate freezes. And finally this year, uh, with the state uh, boom in revenues, we have actually been included in it finally. And the state of California's legislatures have approved a plan to increase funding over the next five years to un unprecedented numbers. Um, but that, and then again, that's spread out over the next five years. And it certainly doesn't mean that we don't need our donors um, because we at Las Tropas have always uh, wanted to go above and beyond what's actually available and out there. But what this means is that we can actually start uh, bringing in, uh, supplementing our quality staff that we have now and providing more resources, including financial resources to them, and also being able to provide uh, uh, more professional uh, type staff, such as uh, speech and language pathologists, such as uh, occupational therapists, such as um, oh, um, the assistive technology that people need to communicate. So I mean, there's so many different opportunities. And I also think that we are on the precipice of really creating community inclusion, not just integration, but inclusion for people with developmental disabilities. So it's a very exciting time and this facility can't come at a better time. So I'm good. super excited. Good, good. I couldn't agree more. So um, I'm gonna combine a couple of, of our questions that we talked about. Um, why do you think it was important to embark on this project? And do you see the facility as your legacy, perhaps? Uh, let me answer that last one. This is not my legacy. <laughs> this is, and, and I get that question a lot, you know, uh, and, you know, or I get comments that, hey, Dan, you're gonna leave such a great legacy. And I always have to remind everybody that it's not about me. But it's about the people that we serve and it's about our community. And I think that this is a legacy for the La Mirinda area. I, a lot of people aren't aware that we've been around since longer, since before Lafayette was an actual incorporated city. Um, we've been in this area since 1956, uh, when La, uh, Las Trampas was founded. And well before community services for people with developmental disabilities were a common thing. And this is, this is a legacy that this community actually uh, gets to, uh, should cherish. And I know that they do cherish. And I think it's uh, really more of a legacy also of our committed staff and our committed board of directors. And I'm not talking about just our current board of directors. We've had several people, uh, at least in my 10 years when we've been talking about this project, um, who've served on the board and who've always been very committed about uh, this project. And what was the other half of that question, Mike? <laughs> Why did you feel it was important to jump into a big project like this? <laughs> well, you know, I walked in here in uh, 2011 when I was touring, uh, considering the position here, and I just saw, for lack of a better term, dilapidated, uh, horrendous conditions, you know? And, and that is a key indicator of what I was talking about earlier, the underfunding of our services over the years, because when you don't have very much, very many funds to work with, what are you gonna do? You're gonna spend it on the actual service rather than the infrastructure. But what I think was missing before was looking at the fact that the infrastructure is key to the success of the people that we serve. As a rehabilitation counselor by uh, education, one of the things that we're trained on is to use our senses and to look and see what are the barriers for people that we serve. And as I looked around this facility, there were barriers everywhere. 
it was built way before uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act. So people in wheelchairs uh, couldn't access all of the rooms, couldn't access toileting facilities like they should. So there was just so much opportunity. And I am so lucky that we have a board of directors that understood what that vision uh, was and how we could actually make a difference in people's lives. So it was daunting, but as I stand here and I look at everything now, so exciting. And it was the right move. Definitely the right oh, move. Yeah. I mean, look at well, that. I think the, the board sat around the conference table and said, we don't have a choice. We, we could not go on with our programs in that old facility. They, it just was, as you said, dilapidated. It could be called something worse. <laughs> Well, and you're sitting in that boardroom and, you know, navigating the wires hanging from the ceiling and looking around and looking at the decaying walls. I think you, you guys got it immediately. And, well, um, as, as I think we've discussed, what a better place to take our new board members as the board was growing, get them in that old building and have them go, wait a minute, <laughs> we can't live with this. So it was good. <laughs> All right. Um, and, and we serve people else? in this building? Crazy. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share about uh, the project that maybe we haven't hit on? I think what's key for me, I think it's just the uh, huge thank you to the community and the thank you to the board again uh, for all the support that they've provided uh, through this project. Um, we're getting there. We're very close. I mean, you know, in just a few months, we're going to be moving into this uh, fabulous building with all of its new counters and lovely spaces and big open wide halls. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And I think, I hope that everybody out there, um, once we get through most of the pandemic, and I'm sorry for that noise, they're painting. Believe it or not, actual work is happening as we speak. So I need to get away from the sound. But um, anyway, I, I, I think I can't wait until the time that we can actually have people on site and actually come see and tour because you can see it through the pictures and you can see it through my screen, but it doesn't give it justice. It's, yep. it's thrilling to be here. So Dan has agreed to answer some questions at the very end. We are going to show some quick slides of some of the current progress just to walk you through. Um, we do have permanent power on site. It uh, yeah. takes a long time to move pg and but they did show up on the right, uh, some of our underground conduit to bring in internet and phone. And uh, that was a happy day for us. We were paying for a generator. <laughs> uh, and, and I think while this seems like a very subtle uh, picture here, it looks like just cabinetry, but these are the cabinets that are actually going to be in our personal care uh, room. Um, a lot of the individuals that we serve have physical conditions where they do require personal hygiene assistance, uh, including adult diaper changing and so forth. And it, the way it was in our old facility, it was an old classroom that was actually turned into uh, a makeshift adult changing station. Whereas here, their individual needs are actually going to be met with hydraulic, uh, with hydraulic changing tables, electronic lifts, the cabinetry to store their stuff uh, uh, individually, and most importantly, the personal privacy and the dignity uh, that they deserve. Um, so we're super excited. We have five of these changing tables that are going to be in this facility. And with uh, being of community support, one of those actually being open to anybody who needs it in the community to just swing by here. And if you need to use it, it's there. Great. Yes, it's a great feature. It's, it, as you said, it's about dignity and, and respecting people and their privacy. Um, uh, just one quick comment here. We've got some pictures coming forward because we do. There we go. We forward, backwards, do forward, have, backwards. Uh, paint, we, we had paint on the walls, but with power, we're now getting to see some of those beautiful light fixtures we've talked about leading up to 
actual installation. Um, they're, they're dimmable, they're tunable, uh, there's no flicker. And uh, the, the ones in the upper right, that's in the uh, upstairs lobby. And um, the other thing I wanted to point out here in the lower left, you can see through those big classroom windows, uh, how the indoor space communicates with the outdoor space. It's, it's not closed, it's not institutional. You feel like you're part of our wonderful site and we have just an amazingly beautiful site. Yeah, and it's going to be amazing when we're done. And it's going to be really difficult getting me to uh, not to actually do my work and not just stand and sit and look outside those windows all day. I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Certainly then on our is. next slide, look at that. So typically, we've always liked to show you um, a rendering, which is on your upper right a rendering of what the building's gonna look like when it's done. And now that down at the bottom left, I came out to the site on Friday, took a few pictures. Look at how close it is to getting done and how much it's really starting to look like the end product. We've got stucco on the walls. We've got colored stucco. You can see the orange and the yellow brightness, colorful, beautiful. And we're really starting to see this whole thing come to fruition. And it's finally becoming a reality. So we're super excited about that. You got that right. We've been waiting and we've been looking at that rendering and now it's here. So one last pitch for our pavers. Um, I'll be quick because I think I covered it pretty well, but we do have two sizes. It's very easier to put your order on the website, but if you do have any issues or problems with that, contact me, um, M. Collier at lastrompas.org. <laughs> I'll help you fill out the form. But uh, I do, as I said before, I encourage you to maybe talk to neighbors, friends, business people in town that you have relationships with. And uh, this will certainly get us pole vaulting over the, the finish line. And with that, I think we're going to go to some questions. Thank you. What a great job, Mike and Dan. Really appreciate that. You guys, as always, um, share so much great information with our donors and our friends at Las Trompas. Um, somebody had a comment and wanted to say thank you, Dan, and everyone else who has been advocating for those individuals we serve and how important that is. So let me share that thank you to you. And then uh, we have a question that has come in. Somebody wants to know, could you tell us a little bit more about the pavers, specifically, where will they be located? Is there a limit to the number of pavers we can have? And is there a deadline to place that order? So when it comes to the limit of the number of pavers, that I don't know about. But let me tell you, if you want to buy 100 pavers, I'll make the room. Yes. <laughs> we will make the room. We will find space for those pavers because, you know, as Mike said, Every penny counts at this point. We are so close to our goal. And, you know, I think the one of the biggest frustrations that Mike and I serving on the infrastructure committee have had is, you know, we get hit all the time, even though we plan for it in our budget, we get hit all the time with what they call a change order. You know, those little surprises that come up and like, you know, hey, we need to put a manhole cover over in this particular area, and that's going to cost you a bunch more money, and we got to come up with that money. So every little penny counts right now. So um, what I can also tell you about the pavers is, and I think Mike did a really great job, is I'm, I'm trying to navigate these steps because I want to show you where the pavers are going to be. Um, Thanks, Dan. The... the there's two different sizes. There's the eight by eight with three lines of 18 um, characters per line at $1,000 per paper. And then there's the 16 by 16, which is five lines at 18 characters per line. And that is a 16 by 16 inch paper. And that would be $3,000 donation towards the organization. And because they're doing so much wonderful painting here, the front doors are actually all taped up. So I'm having to find uh, an escape route through the electrical room. Did we say that we have electricity? We have electricity. Um, 
the electrical room actually opens out. Look, look, <laughs> there's our canopy. And if you look down below, uh, all the scaffolding here, because they've been working on putting the stucco in the uh, ceiling of the canopy. If you look below, the pavers will be right here on that walkway. As soon as everybody walks in, people will see who's donated to this project and your name can be memorialized here. So we're super and excited to be able to offer that to our community who's been so wonderful to yes. all of us. And I will jump in to say, Dan, that that is the first phase of our pavers. So I think if folks are interested in having a paver on that main walkway that will be seen every day, um, it's best to get those orders in sooner rather than later for that purpose. Absolutely. And, and you can actually sort of see the outline of where our new uh, turnabout is going to be. And look, some of the curbing is already going in to our facility. And again, if you want to buy 100 pavers, I'll find space. We will make it happen. Um, so I, I appreciate the question and the support. And I think that was the end of our questions. We just had a few comments, everybody saying thank you very much and everybody enjoying what they've seen, Dan. Well, and I wanna thank you, Sandra. Um, what <laughs> a lot of people don't know is, um, oh, for personal reasons, um, Sandra notified me uh, about a week and a half ago um, that she's decided to move back home to her lovely home state of Indiana and will be leaving us uh, at the end of this week. And I wanted to really thank you for everything that you've done, especially on the capital campaign and uh, guiding us through our fund development activities over the last two, uh, two almost two and a half years uh, mm -hmm. now. And uh, really wanted to share our appreciation of you and thank you for everything. And I wanted to also let everybody out there know, we got it handled. Uh, it's That's gonna be right. a little rough without Sandra, but we got it handled, <laughs> it's all good. Um, for some of you who don't know, Brooke Burns, she was our interim director before Sandra. She's gonna step in for a little while until we find a new director, but this is all about Sandra right now. And thank you so much for everything that you've done, Sandra. And um, it's your moment. I, I echo like those think? sentiments, Dan. Um, well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate I appreciate the closeness of uh, working through these last two and a half years. It hasn't been easy every week or every month, but, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for the effort and the energy you've put in. Well, I want to yeah. say thank you very much, Dan and, and Mike and the board. Thank you so much. It has been my pleasure. Um, this has probably been one of the toughest decisions to make because I'm torn between going back to my family and the individuals that we serve that I love so much. Um, Las Trampas is a very special place and I am just so thrilled that they're gonna have this brand new facility and afford to them all those choices and all those opportunities that we had only hoped at one time to have. So thank you, it's been a fun ride. And Sandra, because of you, um... They will get, because of you, they will get to enjoy this facility. You were a big part of this. And I also uh, would like to say that, yes, you're going back to be with your family in Indiana. I but am. Remember you, remember, you always have family out here on the West Coast, too. Absolutely. We, thank you. All right. Thank you. So I thank For everybody sure. out there. And um, if you feel feel like saying, uh, wishing uh, Sandra the best of luck, her email address still is till the end of this week, scockrell at lostrumpets.org. So send her some good wishes. Okay. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. We appreciate you joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.